Hello, this is Sarah Brush. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. So I just wanted to do a quick impromptu video and I wanted to talk about the Chronicle of Higher Education and I wanted to talk about this absolutely disgusting and reprehensible article that they just printed, they just published about me. And I'm going to go through the article line by line in a different video and explicitly go through every single one of the outright lies in this article about me. But I was, I just want to talk a little bit about what happened. So after the uh, post Connecticut Freedom of Information Act Commission hearing brief came out on January 3rd, Friday, January 3rd. And so the brief came out, the post hearing brief, and I got permission from my attorneys to release it to whomever. And so I, I decided to send it to a few journalists and I hesitated sending it to Katie Mangan, I believe she pronounces her last name, at the Chronicle of Higher Education because they had defamed me, seriously and egregiously defamed me after the Living or Napping While Black hate crime hoax at Yale. And so I hesitated to send it to her. But then I thought, you know, I'm going to send her the post hearing brief. I'm also going to send her my medium essay which is the response to James Hatch's essay, My Semester with the Snowflakes, and my essay is called uh, My Six Years at Yale with the Woke Intersectional Feminists and How They Tried to Destroy Me. And I also sent them a recent blog post about my wrongful permanent uh, Twitter suspension. And then I also sent her a list of all of the articles and blog posts that have been written in support of me, including Kathy Young's two pieces and uh, a blog post by Scott Greenfield and a blog post by Brian Leiter, um, etc. and the post-millennial piece about the living or napping while black incident being a hate crime hoax. So I sent her all of these things and I just thought, and I sent it uh, those same materials to a few other journalists and I just thought, you know, if I can get the Chronicle of Higher Education to even write a halfway sympathetic, you know, truthful piece, that is going to go so far in helping me save my life and lifelong human and civil rights, academic and legal careers. So I thought I'm going to go ahead and give it a shot. So I went ahead and did that. And I heard back from Katie Mangan. And she said that she was off on assignment, but that she would have another reporter, another journalist with the Chronicle of Higher Education get in touch with me. And then I heard from an Emma Dill. And now, obviously, given the way that I've been treated, just atrociously treated by the press, I am extremely wary of dealing with reporters, extremely wary of giving interviews. And I didn't want to give an interview, but in lieu of that, I offered to Emma Dill that I would respond in writing to whatever questions. So she sent me a pretty lengthy list of questions and I returned to her, it was a five or six page document responding fully to every single one of her questions. So I was very hopeful about how the piece would turn out. And I initially, when it came out, I, I was concerned because of the title itself. Um, the Chronicle of Higher Education puts certain of their pieces behind a paywall. That includes this piece, but the title described me as lashing out. The title described me as lashing out at Yale officials and other Yale students. Um, 
And so, of course, this gave me pause and I was concerned, became very concerned because I feel that this is painting me, as many people have tried to paint me, as, you know, a violent psychotic. And I'm, you know, this has been happening repeatedly, especially recently, including by Twitter, that my attempts to defend myself, my attempts to tell the truth, my attempts to save my life and human and civil rights careers are painted as me being the attacker, me being the perpetrator rather than the victim of an absolutely vicious and global vilification, cyber mobbing and decimation of my reputation and my livelihood and my life by the fake news press and the entire moral outrage industry. So now my attempts to even defend myself, my attempts to save my life and career are painted as me being the attacker. Now I'm the attacker and this is exactly what Twitter did to me in terms of the permanent suspension, which is incredibly wrongful. They falsely accused me of hateful conduct, which I consider to be defamatory, grossly defamatory. I have never engaged in hateful conduct in my entire life on or off Twitter. But Twitter did the same thing. My, they painted my attempts to defend myself, my attempts to stand up for myself, my attempts to call out those who egregiously defamed me and cyber mobbed me and tried to cyber bully me into suicide as me being the attacker, me being the perpetrator. So, uh, which is outrageous, which is outrageous. And so I felt that the Chronicle of Higher Education did the exact same thing in their title. And I feel it's also stigmatizing mental illness. And the entire article is nothing but lies. Every single thing, she used none of what I gave her in the five or six page document responding to all of her questions. None of that was used. None of that was addressed. And she so grossly mischaracterized every single thing I wrote in my medium essay that it amounts to a bunch of outright lies. And in fact, there are outright lies in the Chronicle of Higher Education piece. And I just want everyone to know that the Chronicle of Higher Education is fake news. It is nothing more than a trashy online gossip rag that peddles in sensationalized defamation. And I explained, I explained to Emma Dill when I was corresponding with her, that I did not feel comfortable giving an interview for this very reason, because of the way that I had been atrociously treated by the fake news press, the way they had raked my life over the coals, the way that they tried to cyber bully me into suicide, which they almost succeeded. They didn't care. They didn't care that they destroyed the life and career and endangered the life of an innocent civil rights activist. They didn't care. And they obviously still don't care. <laughs> they still don't care. Uh, I let them know that I found the article to be disgusting and nothing but lies. And I let them know that I expected it to be retracted immediately. And I told Emma Dill that she is a horrible, evil person and a liar. And I let um, both Emma Dill and Katie Mangan of the Chronicle of Higher Education know that basically I became suicidal, somewhat suicidal after the article came out because I was so distressed and distraught over what they had done. I trusted them and I feel betrayed but also the world needs to know what they did. The world needs to know what they did. Um, it is reprehensible. It is unconscionable. And in the, another video, I will go line by line through the article 
and I will explain why every single line basically is an outright lie. It's disgusting. It's despicable. And that's basically all I want to say. I, I can't, it's shocking to me that at this point, when the truth is finally coming out about the living or napping while black hate crime hoax at Yale, and when the truth is coming out about how I had to go into hiding for approximately a year, how I was suicidal for approximately a year, when the truth is finally coming out about how wrongful the global defamation campaign against me was, how wrongful the global vilification of me was. When the truth is finally coming out, for the Chronicle of Higher Education, who claim to be journalists, who claim to be journalists, with some semblance, I guess, they claim, of journalistic ethics and standards, and for them to have perpetrated this, it is fake news. It is fake news. It is peddling in sensationalized defamation and it is disgusting and horrible that they would do this at this point when the truth is out the truth is out that I am the entirely innocent victim of a hate crime hoax uh, and for them to do this at this point is it's it's almost beyond belief you almost just can't even believe that they would have done this. So I will go line by line through the article and explain all of the lies. And you will be shocked. You will be shocked. I, I don't really have too much more to say right now. Uh, I just, everyone needs to know that you should ignore. You should consider that Everything that gets printed or published in the Chronicle of Higher Education, you should just assume that it's false. You should assume that it's defamatory. You should assume that it's a falsehood. You should assume that it's prevarication. You should assume that it's an outright lie. And I don't know how they dare call themselves journalists, and I don't know how they sleep at night. Um, and I hope it was worth it to them, selling their souls for a little bit of moral outrage industry money. I hope it was worth it. I hope it was worth it. Okay, that's all I'm going to say right now, but I'll do another video and I will go line by line through the article and explain how it is nothing but lies. But thank you so much for watching this and thank you so much for all of your kind words and your support. It means the world to me. And please, uh, Donate to my legal fund if you can, and I'll put my PayPal me and GoFundMe links below. And if you can't donate for whatever reason, the next best thing is to please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm getting closer and closer to being able to monetize my YouTube channel, but I do need more subscribers. And also, please, I'll, I'll put the I'll put the link to the Medium essay below, and I'll also put the link below to Skeptic Reviews, uh, Skeptic Review 89's, Gretchen Mullins blog post, which includes the post-hearing brief. And yes, and I'll, I'll put the link to the blog, my blog post where I talk about uh, Twitter's wrongful permanent suspension of me as well. I'll put all the links below. So thank you so much and take care. Have a great night.